All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the manufacturing flow of cost through the manufacturing process. In particular, we're going to talk about job order costing, but we can do the same thing for process costing. So you'll see when we talk about process costing, uh, we will do kind of the same thing. We're going to make a few alterations to what we're going to be talking about today. But in this lesson, we're going to specifically talk about job order costing. So job order costing, remember, accumulates production costs by job. So for instance, if I was a mechanic um, and you came to me for an oil change, I as the owner am going to have to keep track of how much that job is going to cost me. Not necessarily you as the customer, but me as the provider. And so you come for an oil change and you're going to need, let's say, five quarts of oil, an oil filter, and then someone's going to need to do the work. So, you know, let's pretend for the ease of math that a quart of oil is $2. So if you need five quarts of oil in your car, I'm gonna, it's gonna cost me $10 just to put oil in your car, new oil in your car. So I'm gonna put $10 on your job because your job requires five quarts of oil at $2 a piece, that's $10. What else do we need? Let's say we need an oil filter. So that oil filter costs me as the provider $3 and so I'm gonna add $3 to the job cost sheet. So now it's costing me $10 plus $3, $13 to complete an oil change. Now what else am I missing? It can't just change itself, so I'm gonna to need to hire labor. And let's assume that I'm paying a mechanic 20 bucks an hour, and it's taking them 30 minutes to complete this oil change. So I'm gonna add $10, $20 per hour, half an hour would be $10, to the job. So the job is going to cost me $13 in direct material, $10 in direct labor, and then we have some other expenses that we're going to incur. For instance, we're going to need equipment, we're going to need electricity, we may need some tools, we may need rent. We have all of these other overhead expenses that we're also going to need to add to the job. Now that's beyond the scope of this lesson, so we're going to stick with our direct materials and direct labor, but that's what we need to complete the job. Now, why do I need to know this as a managerial accountant? I need to know this as a managerial accountant because I need to understand what I need to price to my customer the cost of this job. And for instance, if, I, if, it, if we already know that it's already taking $26, $23, so 13 in supplies and $10 in labor, we already know it's gonna cost us $23 just to complete the project, I can't be charging my customer $23. I need to charge them, let's say, $30 so that I make a $7 profit. And again, we're not talking about overhead, so let's just keep it simple here. So $23 it's costing me, I need to be able to charge more to my customer, so in this case $30, to make sure that I make a profit. And so we accumulate those costs by job. Now the next car comes in and they need, let's say, a new shocks and struts. That is going to be priced differently than my oil change. The shocks and struts might cost me, let's say, $400 in direct materials. It's going to cost me uh, four hours of labor, so $20 times four is 80 bucks. So it's going to cost me 80 bucks plus $400 in materials, so it's going to cost me 480 bucks. Notice that's different than the oil change, and so that's why that's why we need this job order costing so that we can accumulate the cost by job because they are very different in nature. Now, we already talked about it, but in manufacturing we have three different types of costs. We have direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So direct materials are the materials, the way that I look at it is the materials that my customer is going to take when they leave. So if this is a repair shop, it's that new oil that they're taking, the new oil filter that they're taking. If it's the, if it's the shocks and struts, it's the new shocks, the new struts. That's what they're actually taking with them. Okay, so the, those materials are directly associated. Now if I provide just a service, so for instance, I am a lawyer, all I do is provide a service, I may not necessarily have direct material costs. So, don't be alarmed here. Sometimes you may have direct material costs, sometimes you don't. But that's what direct material, 
material costs are. Now, we also have direct labor. That's labor directly associating, associated in converting the raw materials into finished goods. And so that would be someone changing the oil. That would be a lawyer um, representing you on, their, on your behalf. <clears throat> And then lastly, we have manufacturing overhead. Those are other costs that are associated with doing the manufacturing process that are needed, but not necessarily direct materials or direct labor. Example of manufacturing overhead may be the depreciation on your equipment. You need equipment to change the oil, but the customer doesn't get to take it and we can't consider it direct labor, but we need it in order to uh, do the oil change, that would be a manufacturing overhead. The depreciation would be, not the cash outflow for the equipment, but the depreciation would be. So the, that's an example of a manufacturing overhead. Overhead that's uh, needed to be incurred in order to convert the raw materials into finished goods. Now, as we incur those costs, we're going to incur them in the balance sheet and income statement. So I'm going to give you kind of the graph of kind of the timeline of how things go and then uh, we'll go into it a little bit deeper. So let's first, first what happens is, is we have direct material. So for instance, even if I'm a repair shop, I'm going to need direct materials, whether that's oil, whether that's oil filters. In this case, it could be these Lego parts that mean something. So these are my direct materials. In order to get the direct materials, I'm going to have to buy them. And when I buy them, the question is, is what do I do with the cost? Now, we talked about capitalization of cost, so we're going to capitalize the cost of those assets, which would be the inventory, to an account called raw materials inventory. So for instance, let's say I buy $100 of raw materials. So what will happen is I'm going to debit raw materials inventory, and I'm going to use abbreviation, so debit raw materials inventory for $100, and then I'm going to credit, let's say, cash, because I'm going to have to pay that vendor cash of $100. So raw materials inventory is going to go up because the debit, it's going to go up by $100. Now, this is our balance sheet, so raw materials is on the balance sheet. So when we buy those raw materials, we debit raw materials inventory, that is a balance sheet account, and that stays in inventory. Now, let's say that we've, uh, this 100 things that we bought were 100 of these. Let's say it's a part for a car, it's a Lego, but it's a part for a car. Um, let's say we are now repairing a car, and we need one of these. Well, we know that we bought 100 of these at $100 for total, which means that this one item costs us a dollar. What happens through the flow of things is that we move raw materials into an account called work in process. So I need one of these. I do a materials requisition. A materials requisition is a request for materials for a job. I get a materials requisition and I say I need one of these parts. These parts are a dollar. So then what would happen is on a journal entry standpoint, I'm going to move it from here to here raw materials into work in process. Why am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to need this in order to work on my project or job. Well, that would be a work in process, work in process needed for the job. So I'm going to transfer $1 out of raw materials into work in process. The way that I do it is, well, if I'm going to put it into the work in process, it's going to be a debit. So work in process or WIP for a dollar, and then I'm going to credit, where is it coming out of? It's coming out of raw materials inventory, raw materials inventory for $1. So what happens here is I credit $1 there, I debit $1 there, and now I have $99 worth of raw material inventory. Now I've made it simple here because $99 means that I have 99 of these left, okay? Now, the key thing here is we're talking about cost here, not quantity. So for instance, if let's say we bought 10 of these and they were $10 a piece, if I was moving it from raw materials into work and process, I'd move $10 instead of one. So big note there, this we're talking about cost, not necessarily quantity. All right, so work in process to raw materials. I take this one product and I'm working on this job. Let's say it's the only thing that I'm doing in that job. Okay, we won't worry about labor for a moment. 
but the only thing that I, we did was we put this one part on this car and we're done. When we're done, we move it from work in process to an account called finished good. Why? Because I'm now finished. So in this case, all I did was I put that one part on, it was a direct materials, that's it, we're going to leave uh, overhead and we're going to leave direct labor off for now. For now. So then I'm going to move a dollar from here to here. Well, how do I move a dollar from here to here? I'm going to debit finished goods inventory, so finished goods inventory for one dollar, and I'm going to credit work in process. Where is it coming out of? So then I get one here, one here. Notice here, one minus one equals zero. I have nothing work in process, which makes sense because I'm now done. So I'm ready to start on a new project, but I'm not there yet. So now I've moved it to finish good. So um, I moved that one dollar to finish good. What's next? Well, we call up the customer and say, hey, your vehicle is now done. Come by and pick it up. They decide, you know what, I'm going to wait until the new year, assuming that they dropped off their car on December 26th, the day after Christmas. They said, I'm going to wait until the following year because um, I'm out of the country for, for the next 10 days. So January 6th, they come back and they say, hey, thanks for fixing my car. Um, how much is it going to cost? We say it's 10 bucks. What do we do with that cost next? We move the cost from finished goods inventory to cost of goods sold. So when they come and pick up their car, they give me the $10, then I'm going to move that $1 from finished goods inventory to cost of goods sold. How do I do that? It's going to cost of goods sold, so I'm going to debit cost of goods sold for $1, and I'm going to credit finished goods inventory for $1. One there, one there. And now this is zero, which makes sense because I have nothing in finished inventory, assuming that I didn't start a job. And now I have a cost of goods sold of one. Now in addition to this, if we remember from uh, financial accounting, when we talk about the retail method of accounting, we would debit cash because we would assume we receive cash from our customer and credit revenues for $10. So that's, if you remember from financial accounting, you'd have to do two entries when you make a sale, one for the receipt of the revenue and two for the expense of the cost of goods sold, okay? So that's the flow, the manufacturing flow cost um, when we're talking about job order costing and it works for process costing too. We're going to make one adjustment to the process costing, but that's what we're doing. We buy raw materials or direct materials and even indirect materials, but we buy materials, they go into raw material inventory. How do they go in raw material inventory? Because raw material inventory is a balance sheet account, increases in, sorry, raw materials are a balance sheet account, raw materials are an asset, increases in assets are debit, so we're gonna debit raw materials inventory. When we now need it for the job, we move it from raw materials inventory into work in process. We do that by debiting work in process, crediting from where it came from. It came from the raw materials inventory. And then when we're done with the project, we move the cost from the work in process to finished goods inventory. We do that by debiting finished goods inventory and crediting work in process. When the customer finally pays, we move it from finished goods inventory into cost of goods sold. So that's the process. If you understand this process, this will make it will be easier as we go through the manufacturing uh, accounting for job order costing. Now, what about direct labor and manufacturing overhead? Direct labor look, works the same way, except we can't store time. So if we can't store time, we don't have direct labor inventory or even labor inventory. We can't just store someone's time. So what we do is we charge it straight to work in process. So for instance, if I worked one hour and I get paid $20 an hour and I'm working on this job and I've worked one hour, we would put $20 straight into work in process. So we would uh, debit work in process for $20. Now, kind of go back to financial accounting, if we were to pay in our employees, we would uh, debit payroll expense for $20 and credit cash for $20. When we're talking about the manufacturing process and accumulated under the job costing method, instead of debiting 
payroll expenses, we would debit work in process. So same entries that we did in financial, except we're just going to switch the debit to work in process instead of payroll expenses. Just like for an asset, instead of debiting equipment expense, we would debit equipment, which is an asset account. So we're going to capitalize first, and then we'll expense it later on when the revenues come. So in this case, let's assume that we had $1 plus we had an hour of labor. So then we would debit work in process for $20. Now, if I'm done with that project, so we're kind of going stepping back now, that one project required me one of these, which cost me a dollar and an hour of my time at $20 an hour. So that job now costs 21. So when I'm done with that job, I move $21 from work in process to finished goods. Why? Because I had $20 in labor, a dollar in direct materials. So 21 gets moved over. So in this case, I credit work in process at 21. That still makes this zero. And now finished goods at 21. When the customer comes and pays me $40 for the job, then I move 21 from finished goods inventory over to cost of goods sold for 21. So down here, I would have 21, 21, and let's say $40 there, and that would be my entries. So that's the flow. Again, same flow except direct labor. We don't have a direct labor or labor inventory account. Last one is manufacturing overhead. It's kind of beyond the scope of this lesson, but with manufacturing overhead, we kind of do the same thing except we put it in a bucket called manufacturing overhead. So if I were to erase this here, and let's say I had uh, manufacturing overhead or Mo, let's say I bought, I need to fix an equipment, okay? Um, and so by fixing an equipment, it's part, or recalibrating equipment, that's probably a better term, recalibrating equipment. I need to recalibrate the equipment for this job, and so I'm gonna incur $20 in recalibrating the equipment. So what I do is I would debit Mo for $20, credit cash, because I'm gonna pay that cash to my vendor, uh, $20. So actual uh, Mo is $20. What you're gonna learn in this and next chapter is that we're going to allocate manufacturing overhead to a job based on a certain rate, okay? And then so that will go here versus actual, and we kind of go through there. Um, when we do allocate manufacturing overhead, we, ma we allocate it to work in process, and then it still flows. So just like we added 20, let's say we had manufacturing overhead of $10. Then we would add 10 to work in process. Now that job, cost us $31, and so all of this we can change to 31, and we kind of flow it that way. So work in process is kind of that account that we accumulate these job costs, and then when we're ready to move it, we move it all at once into the next uh, T accounts, and in this case, finish goods inventory. So again, this lesson was to give you an understanding of the manufacturing process as far as the expense process and the accumulation of costs. Um, in the next video, we'll talk more about this process in a little bit uh, different terms as far as multiple jobs as we go through. So this kind of gives you just the overview that you need in order to understand job, job order costing.